had a really interesting uh, few weeks here with the program um, right before the holidays. Um, like many people, we got hit with uh, COVID um, pretty hard um, and, and then um, had to cancel our game on the 22nd um, and also our game on the 30th. And I really felt like we were starting to build some great momentum right before that um, with how we played against Illinois State. And we had um, Eastern Illinois coming in and I think our kids were fired up. And, um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's just one of the things that anybody's dealing with right now, um, playing uh, college athletics in this time of COVID. And so um, trying to figure out how to get a, a balance of getting a rhythm, um, what's too much, what's not enough. And um, I think, you know, we came out really strong against Indiana after having had such a long layoff. Um, and then I think some of our fatigue and um, and the layoff really kind of started to show up um, really in the second half of that game. And then um, yesterday, um, we didn't get off to a great start. And then we made a roaring come, come back in that second quarter. And I think really played the way that we know we can play. Um, and then we started off that third quarter, um, not so hot. And I think that really set the tone for the rest of the game. Um, not having Sid Hilliard, um, I think everyone knows who's a fan or um, an avid watcher of our team. Um, not having Sid Hilliard is a huge part of what we do. And so her being out uh, with ankle injury was definitely a blow to our team. Um, but I thought we had some bright spots, um, you know, um, Tara came off the bench and was really great. Um, got in, boxed out, um, and worked extremely hard. Natalie came off the bench and hasn't um, played in a ton of minutes this year. And I think she just was a, um, a great example of continuing to stay ready um, when your number's called. And um, you know, looking forward to getting another opportunity to get back on the floor on uh, Wednesday versus Minnesota. Um, and. Uh, you know, try to take the lessons that we learned from this game and continue to move forward. So Diane's got a question. So playing Minnesota, it's a border battle. It's uh, you know that rivalry game. So how how does that change your approach at all? Um, no, I think you know right now it's a, a matter of. Um, each game, just trying to make sure that we're worried about Wisconsin and trying to make sure that we get a little bit better um, each day and take advantage of um, you know the opportunities that are put for forth um, in front of us. And so, whether you know, obviously that's um, there's a sense of pride uh, when you have a border battle, but I think more than anything, it's making sure that we're putting a good product on the floor and that we're proud of the four quarters that we play. Andy. Marissa, how was Minnesota an important place on your resume? How, what did you learn there to, that allowed you to kind of make your way along to becoming a head coach here? Yeah, you know, um, my time in Minnesota on, under Pam Borin was um, a really formative time for me. Um, Pam was um, a great scouter of the game. Um, I learned so much um, when it came to preparation. Um, and I think that really prepared me to take the next step when I went to UConn. And so, um, you know, I there was some fantastic fans and our, um, you know, our fast break club there and just some really great memories um, and some, you know, really phenomenal kids that I got a chance to coach. And so that was definitely a huge part of my um, my development as a coach um, and to get me to the place now. And, um, you know, I know when, when, uh, whenever we do go back to the barn there, that'll be um, kind of a, a really, um, you know, nostalgic and kind of crazy a feeling. Um, and I have a lot of respect for Lindsay and what she's um, done as a player. Um, got a chance to spend a lot of time with her when, uh, with the Olympics. And I just think that she's a phenomenal person. And so i um, excited to get a chance to compete against her as well. Do you have an update on Sydney, as well as what her availability is, if you if you want to say? And what is she just kind of what did her not being in the lineup kind of just how that changed how you guys played on yesterday? Yeah, um, I don't. I'm waiting um, on on an update. Um, although you know she was just in our walkthrough, so I think that we should have her available for Wednesday. But TBA still or TBD or TBU, I don't know. <laughs> um, but um, no, um, you know Sid is um, really kind of such the cornerstone of what we do, and she's um, so dynamic at being able to get downhill. Um, she's our best offensive rebounder, and so I think. 
you know, she does a lot of the intangibles for us, um, getting in passing lanes, getting steals, loose balls, um, just playing with a passion and a fire. Um, and so, and our, her teammates really feed off of her. So not having her out on the court, I think is something that um, it was evident that we were missing. Um, and, you know, I think when we can finally put five guys out there that are all, um, healthy and clicking. Um, I do think that we can do some um, really great things, but we've had a lot of ups and downs and a little bit of a roller coaster um, this year with um, people in and out and things of that nature. And so um, I'm hopeful that we're on the other side of that. And uh, now in these last 13 games, we can just kind of get after it. Mercy, you're a little deeper into the culture here. You've had a chance to kind of get a measure of it since you've been hired. What is What's your perception of how this place is run? What's your perception of how this, just the way Wisconsin people do Wisconsin things? Ooh, Andy, you're setting me up here. Um, <laughs> no, I think, you know, what I've tried to kind of remain steadfast in is the um, so much success around us and the, um, the, the possibility, right, of what we can continue to become and that we are building a foundation right now. And sometimes um, there's delays, right, when you build stuff, especially in a Wisconsin winter. Um, and so, um, you know, I think there's gonna be ups and downs and talking to other coaches who have gone through that here. Uh, you know, I've talked with Coach Sheffield uh, quite a bit about when he started and to see that he won a national championship this year, but it wasn't overnight, you know, and um, I think I gave um, the suggestion of the book Rapture, which actually got um, uh, uh, somebody saying, thank you so much for that suggestion. So I know at least one person is watching um, this online, but um, right now I just started listening to Jay Wright's Attitude book, and I think it's, you know, he's created such an unbelievable culture at Villanova. Um, I, I was a part of an unbelievable culture at UConn, and so it takes time. It takes time. Um, you've got to get everybody, as I talked about before, in the building, um, invested in what you're trying to do, changing the mindsets of your kids, changing the mindsets of your fans, um, and them understanding that that we're, we're a little bit in the long game of this, and the instant gratification, and we're constantly always um, accusing kids of wanting instant gratification, but I think it's a human um, nature type of thing. and. Um, and the way I want to do this, it's not going to be an instant thing, um, but I think it will be a longer sustaining thing. So it won't be a flash of the pan, but we can really build something that has um, longevity to it. Are you a patient person? No. <laughs> so that is really the ironic part of what I just said five seconds ago. Um, but I'm working on it as I get older. Um, I think uh, there's different ways that you can be a patient and then at the same time, you've got to kind of step your foot on the gas. So finding a balance, I think is probably my, um, my most uh, challenging thing that I wanna be able to do in this almost my 40th year of life. So, uh, but no, I'm not patient um, in any part of my life. And um, if you have a suggestion for me, Andy, I am open. The Big Ten has kind of had a resurgence these last couple of years, having several ranked teams, especially this year. I think there's five or six teams that are ranked. What have you learned about the conference kind of overall, just the overall strength of the conference and, and some of the teams you've faced already? Um, one thing that I've really taken away from it is that um, some of these teams didn't have this um, a level of talent in the past. And so to me, that's like it's possible to do it in any of these um uh, situations. Um, the other thing I've, I've, I've learned is that there's, um, there's veterans on these teams, so they've been together for a long time. The teams that are ranked, for the most part, have some either like an Iowa that has Caitlin Clark, who's you know just a phenomenal talent. But if you look at a team like Indiana that we just played, I mean, you've got Allie Patberg, who's been there, you know, it's their seventh season playing basketball, right? So, you know, when you're trying to build something and you have the ability to bring, uh, you know, returning five core starters back year, in, you know, two years in a row and on an Elite Eight team, that shows you that in order to be able to, um, you know, be one of those 
top ranked teams, you've got to be able to have veterans that you can um, you can count on. You've got to be able to have some continuity, and you've got to be able to have that cohesion on the court because that's that's what makes great teams. Um, they play alongside one another a long time. They're in the battles together, and um, you know we're just starting this thing. And so, but again, I'm talking to my kids about the standard that we're trying to set, regardless of necessarily always the outcome, but who we are as Wisconsin. Uh, what we want to become and uh, what we want to attract for future Badgers. And so um, there's got to be a way that we do it, and that has to be unwavering no matter um, whether we have as much talent or as much experience as other people. The athletic department is celebrating Martin Luther King week. They're doing a service week, including your Wednesday night game versus, versus Minnesota. What has his legacy meant to you as a, a black coach? Yeah, you know, I actually have a picture of um, Martin Luther King in my office um, and him giving a speech in Birmingham and he's looking out to the crowd. So it's just the picture um, from behind his head. Um, but he was so iconic and I think it's such a powerful um, picture that you could know exactly who he was um, even without seeing his face. And you look out into the um, the faces in the crowd. I think, you know, his his belief in um, in you know, our, our world being a better place, his belief in um, that, you know, we all, that he had a dream, right? That, that, we, that one day we would be judged by um, the content of our character and not the color of our skin. And um, I don't think we're there yet, obviously, but what I do think is for him to be such a dynamic leader and um, to know that he was assassinated because of his beliefs that were so um, radical for some, um, and to know that we continue to carry the torch and that I stand on the shoulders of him and what he meant um, to our black community Community, and that me in this position, I have a responsibility to, um, you know, carry myself with pride and be an example for other young black coaches, men and women, and for my players. Um, you know, I take that, I don't take that very lightly. And also on Wednesday, I just want to remind our fans to come out um, and to uh, bring socks. Um, you know, we are collecting as many socks as we can. My mom was actually um, ran a homeless shelter um, at one point in my life, and that was one of the most needed things um, for our, our, our people in our community that are in need um, is warm socks. Just think about when you're um, going out into a cold winter. So um, all of our fans, if you guys can, please bring out um, as many pairs of socks as you can.